In the previous videos to this one in this series discussing saturated fat and unsaturated fats and their roles in promoting or protecting against insulin resistance, we went over four studies that showed less than favorable results for saturated fats and far more favorable results for unsaturated fats. Yet, there were some limitations with these studies. Two of them were in isolated pancreatic cells, and the two others were done in people, sure, but they were extremely short-term measures, the effects of these fats over a few hours up to one day. So, in this final video of the series, I'd like to take a look at some longer-term studies, specifically four of them, lasting months on diets higher in saturated fat or diets higher in unsaturated fat, and the outcome on insulin sensitivity and resistance. Now, something else that I mentioned at the end of the last video was some of the conflicting results in these four studies. So how do we make sense of all this confusion? So three studies of the four agreed that saturated fat worsened insulin sensitivity, or you can also say that they increased insulin resistance. Only one study of the four disagreed, indicating no negative effects. However, there were some problems with the three studies that showed the negative effect with saturated fat. One study showed reduced blood sugar clearance, which means that sugar is staying in the bloodstream instead of being shuttled into the cells. Unfortunately, this study was comparing a high-fat, high-saturated fat diet versus a low-fat, low-saturated fat diet over four weeks. And while they did find reduced blood sugar clearance with the high-fat, high-saturated fat condition compared to the low-fat, the comparisons aren't fair to the saturated fat. You see, the comparison's fine, but it doesn't isolate saturated fat, so the appropriate conclusions don't implicate saturated fat specifically, only a diet high in fat and saturated fat. So we don't know if the worst blood sugar clearance comes from increased total fat or increased saturated fat or both. The second study makes a critical mistake, and I actually ended up ranting about several mistakes in this study, or at least interfering variables in my detailed analysis of this study. By the way, I have detailed analyses of all these studies discussed, so if you want more information. But this study in particular had a major flaw that makes me want to disqualify it. You see, the researchers recruited a variety of people, normal weight, overweight, and diabetic, which is great because then we might be able to tell the differences between different populations of people. I like the idea, I actually love it, because it's a strength of the study. But although this study found that a saturated fat diet worsened insulin sensitivity compared to a polyunsaturated fat diet, the diets were entirely too different. For one, the caloric intake in the polyunsaturated fat condition was likely lower than in the saturated fat, which now might introduce weight loss, which now makes the comparisons unfair if we're trying to compare saturated versus polyunsaturated fat, so straight up. Weight loss, especially in overweight individuals, improves insulin sensitivity. So now how do we know if the preserved superior insulin sensitivity isn't because of the calorie deficit instead of the polyunsaturated fats in the diet? Well, we can't. So I'd put little stock into the results of this study. Then a third study showed no negative effects of saturated fat. So this study did a lot of things right. They made sure that the diets were the same for all of their nutrition conditions, meaning proteins, total fats, and carbohydrates were the same, except that one diet had higher saturated fat and the other diet had lower saturated fat. So as you can see by this graph I made based off of the data provided, there were no statistically significant differences. So this doesn't make for a great argument against long-term negative effects of saturated fat. Yet, there was still one more study that did show worsened insulin sensitivity with a saturated fat diet. They too controlled for the proportions of each nutrition, keeping proteins, total fats, and carbohydrates the same, and only changing the amount of saturated fat or unsaturated fat. So a similar method to the study that showed the direct opposite. Okay, well, with us sufficiently confused, how do we make sense of this mess? Well, I don't think the second study can offer much, so I wouldn't feel comfortable making any conclusions using it. So I'm going to go ahead and eliminate it. 
Well, the first study tells us some information, but the results are broader than we'd want to tease out the differences between fats, independent of anything else. But we'll return to it. The third and fourth studies need to be pitted against one another. As I mentioned, they did a lot of things right by controlling for nutritional differences. Study three, the one showing no negative effects of saturated fat, lasted four weeks, and study four lasted three months. Beyond that, the amount of saturated fat in study four was a little higher, around 17% of the diet, compared to study three, around 15%. So just as a few comparisons between the two, the longer study with slightly higher saturated fat content showed reduced insulin sensitivity, and the shorter, slightly lower saturated fat study showed no negative effects. Is it possible that the effects take a while to occur? Is it possible that there is a threshold at which saturated fat may not cause any issues, but once past that threshold, it turns detrimental? Well, let me tag in study one again. Remember, they had a high fat, high saturated fat condition. And study three has a higher fat, high saturated fat condition, not quite as high. So taking all three studies together, it's quite possible that shorter exposures to high saturated fat, around 25% of saturated fat in the diet, leads to quicker negative insulin sensitivity, yet roughly the same duration with a lower saturated fat, 15%, may not be detectable after one month. However, similar saturated fat levels continued for three months may yield an overall negative effect on insulin sensitivity. I'm piecing things together based on what data we have, but ultimately I can't say with a strong voice of confidence that we can implicate saturated fat with this data alone. We'd need more. However, if you now think back to all the effects that we saw in the pancreas, the consistent short-term effects in humans, and this data that slightly tilts against saturated fat, would you feel comfortable? concluding that saturated fat at the very least doesn't need an eye kept on it? I don't plan on stopping my investigations here, and actually I already took the liberty of looking over an analysis of over 100 studies comparing not only saturated fats, but also the effect replacing saturated fats with mono and polyunsaturated fats, as well as carbohydrates, have on insulin sensitivity and diabetes risk. If you want access to that, along with much more content on this subject and others, join my Physionic Insiders community, wherein I release exclusive, high-quality analyses that you won't find here. Or check out my other series. I'll speak with you there. Bye.